So um, first I'd like to um, acknowledge the traditional owners and thank the Noongar people for allowing us to meet on this land and uh, it's so fantastic to stand from this perspective and see all of these people here. Management needs to be coordinated and it needs to be best practice. So a lot of what I do is just helping groups and land managers and, and all sorts of different people look at how we can actually manage these species in a coordinated way across the landscape. I form lots of linkages, networks, partnerships. A lot of people do what they do um, and they're on the ground and they've got blinkers on and they're really busy doing what they do and they don't necessarily know what's happening out there. They know that things are going on but they don't have the time to talk to one another necessarily. So I can help with those networks. So when I talk to someone who might be managing cats on Kangaroo Island, I can then, you know, go, oh, did you know that they're also doing it over here or vice versa? So there's some really key sites that are doing some great stuff which is that part of connecting local, state and national research and action. So I talk to people on the ground, I talk to people in state agencies and I talk to the federal government and I can look at what the federal government is doing and kind of feed that back down but also look at what are some of the issues that are happening on the ground and feed that back up through the states and to the federal government. So I kind of have my finger in many pies. One of the key questions that I get time and time again is I have feral cats and what can I do about it? And it, it's an understandable question. They're a tricky beast, as we all know, and, and what actually is available is um, not always clear. Some of the key barriers that come up for people, where do I go to find the information on what, can, what I do? If I stick it into a search engine or if I talk to someone, that information is difficult to find and difficult to understand. The tools that are available really vary from state to state and even vary from land owner and manager to land owner and manager. So what is it that I can use and what is effective in that? And what is legal? What's the legislation say? And if anyone's ever read legislation, which I suspect most of you have tried, it's not easy to understand and we have a whole range of acts that interact with one another in not always useful ways. And so where does what we want to do sit within the legislative framework within our state? And which act has the high, you know, which is the highest in the hierarchy in terms of what I can and can't do? And that's not always easy to follow. And then we bring in domestic and stray cats and that's a barrier for quite a few people. They're really worried about catching people's domestic cats because there's not many places where they're required to be contained, let alone what we start to talk about in terms of policies and legislation and thoughts and ideas around stray cats and how we do that. And the fear of reprisals. As um, Dave Algar said, he's had a few death threats. I'm sure there's a few of you in the room that have had some negative feedback from people. And so we get that, governments get that, departments get that. And so there's a bit of a fear around what we might do and, what, um, and what, how we do it. So one of the things that I've sort of quickly pulled together, and it's hopefully going to arrive <laughs> before we all leave tomorrow, is a, a bit of a guide to planning. Because one of the things we really need to do is what can we do around feral cats and how are we going to do it and have a real plan around it because it really needs to be more than just killing cats. So I've got feral cats, what am I going to do about it? Well, why do you want to manage them? What's the reasoning behind it? Is it actually the feral cats causing the problem? Um, if so, well then let's put together a management plan. And we really need a plan. If it's written down, that's even better. Doesn't have to be, but you know, that's ideal because then all sorts of people can see what you're doing. What is the problem? What's the actual problem that you're trying to, I guess, fix by your management? Who is it that's in impacted? Who else needs to be involved in the planning and managing of these cats? What's the extent? How big? Where? Where are we going? How important it is? Develop up a plan. It needs to be specific and targeted so that you're not just kind of throwing some baits out or chucking some traps out, but it's really targeted on what you're wanting to do. It's coordinated, ideally, on, 
um, broader landscapes across different land tenure. It needs to be achievable, and that is in terms of what management options are available, what resources you have. Um, you want to know how long you're going to do it. It's probably going to be quite a long time unless you've got an eradication program. So have you um, got the ability to do that and how are you going to measure it? Who's going to do the action? When are they going to do it? Where are they going to do it? And make sure you record what you're doing. Ideally, you monitor, and that's not just how many cats you've killed or how many baits have taken, but what is the change in the impact that you're trying to achieve? And how are you going to uh, monitor it? That's one of the other big questions I get is how do I monitor? And that's from the big research projects that some people are doing down to a landholder who might be managing their, their cats or it might be a land care group. And they don't have the capacity of these big research programs to monitor. So how do we actually um, get some of those things happening? And then you need to evaluate it. Did it work? Didn't it work? What kind of changes do you need to do? All of these are the moments, I'm sure, as well. But amazingly, people don't step through these um, kind of ideas, I guess, when they go, we've got cats, what can we do? In terms of information, there is more and more information um, getting out there. And Sarah talked about one really great website this morning, which is the Threatened Species Recovery Hub. There's some really good information there. It's got great research backing it, but it's also got some just really easy to understand um, bits of material. The Centre for Invasive Species Solutions has a website called PestSmart. It's got some really good um, information as well, and there's some glove box guides hanging around and some other material that's on there as PDFs, but also we've got hard copies. The um, WA Feral Cat Working Group has a great website. Feral Scan's really good for monitoring. It's a free um, app that you can um, use. And so it's a, a really good, um, I guess, program that, that you can use for monitoring and evaluating and recording what you do. And so I really highly recommend you having a look at that. And um, I am going to be running some information and training workshops and events over the next three to four months. And I'm really keen to know what you guys would like to know about as well so I can tailor what I do to help you. So feel free to come and talk to me over the next couple of days.